Welcome back to our video module on statics. I'd like to start us off with a problem where we're looking at a barge. Now, this is a little bit artificial because usually barges are pushed. But in today's example, we're going to start off with a barge here. And that barge is being pulled by two tugboats. One's pulling at 30 degrees, the other's pulling at 45. And they're pulling it along at a fairly good pace. And in fact, their pace means that um, the barge is basically has some drag on it. And that drag comes to about 10,000 pounds. All right, so they're, they're pulling with force to counteract that drag of about 10,000 pounds. And the rub is this. These cables they're using, they only can go do 8,000 pounds. That's the limit for these, eight, for these cables. So today's question is going to cover what's going to happen. Are the cables going to snap? Do they have plenty of extra? Should maybe they even go with lighter cables? We don't know. So today we're going to look at vectors, how to use them, and how to solve simultaneous equations for problems like this. Now in this case, you can see what's happened. Let's try and first get a little bit of a feel of what's going on here. All right, uh, Barge Andrea, you know, A, Barge A is pulling up in this direction. Uh, the barge is pulling up in this direction. So there's, there's two components to that. One part of it is it's pulling horizontally and it's also pull, pulling vertically. Um, now counteracting this barge A is barge B, barge Barbara. Now check this out. The barge is going in this, or I'm sorry, tugboat Barbara. The barge is going in this direction, which means that the vertical amount that Andrea is contributing is exactly the same as the vertical amount that Barbara is contributing. You kind of feel that those Andrew's pulling up and Barbara's pulling down at it about the same way. In the same way, you can kind of feel that they both contribute towards the barge's motion in this direction. So you can kind of, kind of feel that that's where the thrust or the pull for the barge comes from. It comes from these, uh, these vectors. It comes from these, it pulling in this certain direction. So what I'd like to do now is start on the problem and solve it. How much tension actually is in these lines? Well, the first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to set up our free body diagram. Free body diagram. And um, we're going to presume, unless there will come a time where we start adding forces that are not at the center of gravity, we're going to assume that everything we're adding is at the center of mass, center of gravity, until I tell you otherwise. All right. So we're going to do our free body diagram. And we know that um, Andrea is going in at 30 degrees. And um, Barbara, let's get Barbara over here. Barbara is going down at 45 degrees. Okay, we'll call that force B. And let's go ahead and just for reference, we'll put this in 30 and 45. And then finally, there's going to be a drag force. And that drag force is going to be going horizontally backwards. We know that to be 10 pounds. Now we have a couple ways of doing this problem. Today, we're going to um, solve using substitution. We're going to uh, put things into the x and y components. For reference, my coordinate frame will be uh, like this, positive x to the right, positive y up. And when we do need a z, right towards you. The z is positive into the viewer. So that said, let's set up an equation for what's going on in the x direction. All right. Um, I'll start us off on the first one. The sum of the forces in the x direction um, is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Now I've told you that it, we have a constant 10,000 pounds. It's just cruising along which means there's no acceleration. So this is going to be zero. Make sure that this makes sense to you. Make sure you don't think that it's supposed to be 10,000 pounds. Well, let's look what is happening. In the positive x direction from force B, we have the cosine of 45 times force B plus the um, cosine, let's go ahead and uh, change colors, plus the cosine of 30 times force A minus 
10,000. So in the negative direction, we have 10,000 pounds. Um, the next equation I'm going to do, so there's our equation for the force in the x direction. And now let's do uh, the force in the y direction. Sum of the force in the y direction is once again going to be mass times acceleration in the y direction. Well, we know that's zero. So once again, the sum of the forces in the y direction is zero, and that's a little easier to kind of feel because you can you can feel that you know you have a force from Andrea pulling up and a force from Barbara pulling down, and those are going to counteract each other. For the x direction, you really have the same thing. You you can feel the F Andrea pulling in the positive direction, Barbara pulling in the uh, positive direction, and the barge pulling back in an equal and opposite force. It's just kind of take some time to feel that out. Um, that said, we're going to say that in the positive direction we have the sine of 30 times force A minus, and let's go ahead and change colors, minus the um, sine of 45. times force B. Great, so we now have two equations, this one and this one, two unknowns. You can solve it how you'd like. Go ahead and put the video on pause. See if you can, uh, let's solve down here, let's solve in terms of force A and substitute in. See how far you can get on this and um, at the end of the, your quick pause, I'll have everything on the screen. Well, I hope you've been able to find out that force B was a little over 5,177. You can see what I've done here where I said the force of A, I, I've gotten, I've isolated that, and that equals the sine of 45 um, equal times force B, sine of 30. Now, one of the reasons why I chose these 45 and 30 is because I want to make sure that these numbers are numbers you know. Um, you should know that the sine and cosine of 45 is 0.707 or... Um, and the sine of 30 is 0.5, cosine of 30 is 0.866. You should just know those. You can also know the square root of 2, square root of 3 forms, but you want to make sure you know these. Now that said, I've taken my force of A, I got force A by itself, and then I've decided to go ahead and uh, substitute up here. So you can see where in my first equation, take a look at the first equation over right here, that I had force of A right here. That was one of the one of the terms in there. So I've taken this this term right here, and I've that my I've ice, I've gotten force A, and I've put it in terms of force B. I make the substitution, and now this whole right hand side, you can see it. Whoops, whoops. Let's let's uh, make that a little bit more cleaner. Um, that whole right hand side of that equation, you can see now that um, it's all in terms of force B. And in fact, what I do is I get force B by itself, and I look at all those, um, I then put numbers on, you know, here I have cosine of 45, all right, make that 0 0.707, cosine of 30, 0 0.866. So I get all these numbers together, and I find that 10,000 is 1.93 times force B, and therefore, we have the force B is 5,177. Now, the algebra form of this, you should be fairly comfortable with. Um, if not, just keep on practicing, keep on practicing. This idea of substitution will become a little bit more natural. And from here to solve, we can go ahead and solve for force A. Um, all we do is we take this force B, 5,177, and uh, I'll try and get an arrow here, and we plug it in right here. So we're going to get 0 0.707, sine of 45 is 0 0.707. Force B is 5,177. And we're going to divide that by the sine of 30, which is simply 0 0.5. And uh, I'm doing that on my calculator right now. That's 7,320. Okay. So that tells us that the tension in force A is 7,320, and the tension in force B is 5,177. Now, does that make sense? Well, take a look up here. You can kind of see that, uh, well, A, our, um, our 
limit that we were looking for was 8,000 pounds, and we're at 7,320. So for the purpose of this problem, that's good. We're going to say that these cables are nicely, nicely sized. But the second thing is that as we look at this vector going in the 30 degree angle, remember that this, this boat, it's not going as vertical as this boat, which means this boat has a higher amount of its overall pull is going to be directed downwards. If a higher amount of its overall pull is going to be directed downwards, that means that this tension will probably, the tension in V will be less than the tension in A. Because you can kind of feel that, you know, if, if both of these, if the length of both of these arrows need to be the same, you know, we say a lot of times that the length of the vector arrow, that's a geometric representation of the, 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 uh, the magnitude of what you're looking at. These two have to be the same. Well, that means that this one that's going really close to the, to the horizon, it's going to have to pull a lot harder to get that same vertical component. And in fact, that's what you see. Force A is at 7,320 pounds. Force B is at 5,177. So in summary, what we've done here is we've built our free body diagram. We've kind of felt our way a little bit of what each of these vectors means. Then we've summed our forces in the x and in the y directions. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll just, um, we'll, uh, get these in this situation right here. And once you get your equation, many times then you can decide what your approach is gonna be because one equation might be really obvious. Like in this case, the force A and force B equation was really easy. It made it easy. Um, or I'm sorry, the, the sum of the forces in the Y direction made things easy. It ju it's just a problem by problem thing. Then we use substitution, solved, and in the very end, if you wanna go through plug both equations into, um, say, one of the original equations, you're able to check your results. Here I've written down several of the steps that we followed in this module.